So welcome to this video where I'm going to go over with you guys a standardized testing system that I've uh, thought up to test out the versatility of any reel that I put through these tests. Now what I mean by versatility is the casting range of any specific reel. Whether it can handle light lures all the way up to heavy lures. Now the very best bait casters are the ones that are the very I should say the most versatile meaning they can handle light lures all the way up to heavy lures without having any kind of modifications um, other than maybe like a rod change. So here's some examples right here that I have in front of you of uh, different types of bait casters. We have the Tatula Type R, which has what I consider a 200 capacity spool. It holds a lot of line. We have the Aldebaran 50, which has a 50 size capacity spool, which holds a very little line. And then we have the Metanium, which is classified as a 100 capacity spool that holds kind of in the middle. Now, the most versatile reel I've ever used and the best all around so far has been this Metanium. Um, I fished it very exclusively for about a year. It casts very, very far with uh, heavy lures, but it also casts light lures very respectably. I've even cast down to 1 8 with this thing and I was surprised how uh, the distance I could get. Now the key to versatility in a reel, of course, is going to be all in the spool. Now it's no coincidence that these have the lightest spools, so they're going to handle the light lures better than this here, especially when filled with line. This is going to be a lot heavier than these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each category. Um, and I'm going to show you what lures I'm going to use, the line I'm going to use, and the rods I'm going to use to throw the lures. These are going to be used on every single reel to make it standardized. So here we go. Okay, so the first lures I'm going to use are going to be the heavy, long casting lures. The uh, First one I'm going to use is a uh, something that everybody probably recognizes. It's a Strike King lipless crankbait, red eye shad, and this particular red eye shad without the hooks weighs almost 16 grams. So that's um, a little bit over a half ounce, probably around almost five eighths of an ounce. And then the next lure is a the Boy Ducket Topwater. It's uh, basically a copy of a Lucky Craft Gunfish and without hooks. This weighs 19.2 grams, so almost three quarters of an ounce. And the line I'm gonna use is going to be Trilene Big Game 12 pound. Hopefully this will be strong enough to handle this uh, top water. Now the rod I'm going to use for at least the, uh, the lipless crankbait is going to be a Shimano Convergence. I don't know if you guys can see that. And this is rated, it's worm and jig rod but it casts really good. It's got a fast, fast uh, taper. There we go. It's medium heavy. Lure weight one quarter to three quarters of an ounce. And of course, a fast taper. Now the rod I'm going to throw, oops, throw that uh, top water. It's going to be. Daiwa Tatula 
six foot ten, medium heavy, and this is a fast action. This will focus. Well, anyway, it's rated from one quarter ounce to one ounce. I know that's upside down, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out. So six ten, medium heavy, fast action. That's going to be for the top water. Now I may change it out if the uh, rod is overpowered by that. I may try to pick out a different a different rod. So the next lure um, I'm going to use. I kind of debated on whether I wanted to do this, but since the five inch Senko is such an important bass lure, it's literally the go-to lure for so many guys that I had to include this. It's going to be five inch, it's going to be unweighted. I think I've weighed one before, but we're going to weigh this again. We're looking at 10.3 grams, so this is around three-eighths of an ounce. And the line I'm going to use is going to be 10 pound mono that I've been using in most of my tests and a lot of guys wonder what is that yellow line I'm using this is it as you can see you get a whole bunch of line for a very little little cost which is why I use it and the rod I'm going to use to test the Senko to cast the Senko I should say is going to be a six foot eight, <clears throat> excuse me, six foot eight, medium power, extra fast Shimano Crucial with a lure rating of one quarter to one half ounce. So that should be right in the sweet spot for the Senko. Okay, on to the next and last category. Okay, so the last category and probably what might be the most important, at least for some of you guys, is the lightweight lure capability or finesse category. Now the lures I'm going to use, I'm going to use two. The first one you guys have seen before is going to be this Rapala Minnow that weighs 3.6 grams or right at one eighth of an ounce. And the next one is going to be a, I think this is a KVD 1.0 square bill. And it weighs right in at seven grams. So that's right at one quarter of an ounce. So the line I'm going to use is going to be six pound mono same Bass Pro Shops Crappy Max and the rod I'm going to use for the square bill if I can get this out of the way it's going to be an Okuma TCS Scott Martin APC rod and this rod is a 6.9 they say it's medium heavy it looks more like a medium to me but it's got a casting range of an eighth of an ounce to three quarter of an ounce now this is a, a what they call I think a moderate fast action which should be perfect for this square bill now the most important rod I'm going to use to cast the 1 8 ounce minnow it is the ugly stick elite actually <laughs> I'm just kidding I took a lot of heat for using that ugly stick elite even though I bought it for the purposes of uh, showing you guys an affordable option but I'm going to use the major craft Corza bait finesse this is the uh, specific bait finesse model and it's a six foot five inch ultralight medium fast taper and it's got a casting range of 
one thirty second to one quarter ounce. So this should be right in the sweet spot. Of course, this is, it's affordable to some guys, but it may not be affordable to some other guys. Shipping from Japan, you're looking at around two hundred dollars. But uh, it's a quality rod, and it's going to bring out the best in these reels when throwing this lightweight. Okay, so now that we've gone over the control tackle, meaning the control line, the control rods, and the control lures we're going to use, I'm going to go over the rating system. Now the first lure, the 1 8 ounce Rapala Minnow, for every foot that a reel throws this minnow over 60 feet, they're going to get one point. So let's say if this Tatula throws this 70 feet, it's going to get 10 points. If the Calais DC throws it 65 feet, it's going to get 5 points. So I'm sure you get the picture. So the I suspect the reels that have the lighter spools when filled with line, as well as the smaller diameter spools are probably going to dominate this test versus the reels that have the large diameter spools that hold a lot of line like the Calais DC. Okay now as far as the square bill crankbait goes each reel is going to get one point for every foot it throws this lure over 100 feet. Now the lipless crankbait each reel is going to get a point for every foot it averages over 150 feet. Now the Senko is only soft plastic in this test. Each lure, excuse me, each reel is going to get a point for every foot it averages over 90 feet. Which I think 30 yards is a very fishable distance for a Senko. Okay, as far as the top water, top water is uh, something that uh, you need to bomb out there to possibly hit schooling fish that are busting um, far away from you. You need to cover a lot of water. So each reel is going to get one point for every foot it averages over 180 feet, which is 60 yards. With a lure like this, with the fixed weighting system in the back, I think that should be no problem. Now, of course, the heavier lures like this are going to favor the reels with the bigger spool and a lot of line capacity. Because there's no way that this Scorpion is going to hold enough 12-pound mono to throw this without spooling it you know, within a second of the cast. Alright guys, I uh, took some time to think up these tests and let me know what you think. Um, the first two reels that are going to go through this gauntlet of tests is going to be the Corrado K and the Tatula Type R. I'm going to get working on that uh, possibly next weekend if it's not too hot. Alright, thanks a lot and uh, what I'm going to do is also is I'm going to uh, put up a thumbnail of the results and a leaderboard, I guess you should say, to what reels are uh, up near the top and hopefully that'll make help some people make some decisions on what reel to buy. Because if you're, you know, saving your money for one reel, you want to make it the right one. Okay guys, thanks a lot.